on the point. What's the matter? It's my kid, little Marie. Both legs broken by falling timber. We've got to get her to the hospital, like Rousseau. Okay, bring her aboard. in after school today. Good. You look like Willie doing arithmetic. Oh, this dreadful bookkeeping. Oh, poor mother. Summer resorts aren't much fun for the people who have to run them, are they? Well, we're pretty lucky. I didn't count on so many reservations considering how far north we are. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have a good season. Well, I better go help Flora. Thank you, dear. Chuck, what are you doing home this time of day? I'm waiting for Red to get back. He should have been here long ago. Oh, there he is now. Son, how about a hand in mooring? Well, this is Red Norse, Doc. I'm expecting him any minute now. I'm his mechanic. That's okay. I'm his brother. He wouldn't mind. I thought I'd sit here for the night. Gee, you must be Paul Gerard. I've been wanting to meet you. Red will be glad to see me. I'm flying a ball mill unit up to the Silver Leaf Mine. Silver Leaf? Well, that's our charter, and this is our territory. <laughs> this isn't anybody's territory, son. The Silver Leaf wanted some action in a hurry, so I gave it to them. But there's no room for two airlines in here. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, how are those two old tea kettles of Red? Can you still keep them flying? Sure, we can keep them flying. They're as good as ever. Uh-huh. Oh, tell me, where can I get some chow? My mother runs the lodge. They should be serving supper pretty soon now. Okay. Oh, uh, don't forget to tell Red I'm here, huh? Yeah. He ought to be tickled to death to see you. <laughs> hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> Are you all right? Yes. And just who are you? Paul Gerard's the name. Ex-flight lieutenant, RCAF. Half-brother of Red North. Know him? Of course. Red brother. That's wonderful. Now, I'm beginning to think it's pretty wonderful myself right about now. Uh, ooh. Oh, you're hurt. Oh, no, it's all right. Just a scratch. Let me see. This is my brother, Chuck. Yes, we've met. Yeah. What happened? I smashed a light globe and Mr. Gerard cut his hand on one of the pieces. Oh, slipped and fell, eh? Did Red get in yet? No, and I'm kind of worried. It's getting late and the fog's rolling in fast. It's going to be pretty tough for him to make a landing. Don't worry about Red. Anything he can fly, he can land. Well, things were tough enough to make Mr. Gerard sit down here instead of flying onto the Silver Leaf with his load. Are you flying a load to the Silver Leaf? Uh-huh. A ball mill unit. Oh. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Gerard, I'll see you at dinner. Sis, I think I'll go over to the meteorological office and check with the boys. They may have heard from Red by radio. Let me know if everything isn't just right. Everything will be all right. You said so yourself. How is it? Not good, Chuck. That fog is settling down fast. 
You haven't heard from Red by any chance? Jocelyn hit him about an hour ago. I haven't had a trace of him since. He came down at Stony to pick up that trap on the point and his daughter. Oh, that guy can pick up more non-paying passengers than any bush pilot in the business. The kid's got two broken legs. They're trying to get her into hospital. Oh. Well, if that fog doesn't lift soon, he's going to have to land at Port Starling. I'm not worried. Anything Red can fly, he can land. He hasn't landed yet. Have you any idea what the ceiling is or the visibility? Oh, he's been in tighter spots than this. BET to BRO. Hello, Novell. Over. BRO to BET. BRO to BET. I'm receiving you, Red. Over. BET to BRO. BET to BRO. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Receiving you, Red. You can't come in. Ceiling zero. Visibility zero. Triport Starling. Can't make it, Jocelyn. My gas is about gone. It's like soup down here. You can't possibly come in. I've spotted a hole. Tell Chuck to stand by. I'm coming through. Okay, Red. Chuck's on his way. Here, little sister. Was it too tough? No, Mr. Red. It wasn't too tough. Red, I don't know how I ever thank you or when I ever pay you. I'll worry about that. You take care of Marie. Look after them, will you, Steve? Who's the visitor? A guy you know. Who? You told me a bit about him once. You called him a grandstander. Paul, my brother? Yeah. <laughs> grandstander. Boy, that was an understatement, Red. Well, what's he doing up here? He's flying a ball mill unit up to the Silverleaf Mine. Well, Red, it looks like he's moving in ways than one. What kind of a brother is that guy? Take it easy, kid. Well, he can't really help himself. He's been jealous of me and tried to outdo me ever since we were kids. It's a sort of a complex with him. He'd stop at nothing to show me up. When we were in the Air Force together flying in formation, he'd deliberately get out of position just to make me look bad. A couple of my pals were shot down in the channel because he left them wide open. That gives you a rough idea, Paul. Where is he? Up at the lodge. He walked in and took over the place as if he owned it. 
Hello, Mr. Gillespie. Glad to see you. Glad to see you, Red. Have a tough landing? All right, Red, better and worse. Hello, Harry. Hello. Hello, Red. Oh, hello, Paul. Where did you drop from? Flying a load through. Decided to land here for the night. You'll be moving on in the morning? Sure. But I'll be around again. Still flying the sick and wounded, eh? You know, in our squadron overseas, Red always heard of the boys home. Good old Red. Faithful escort. <laughs> Better than herding them into the channel. I think I'll turn in. I'll see you in the morning, Red. You won't have to look far. I'll be down at my dock where your ship is moored. You all right, Andy? I'll tell you when I've taken inventory. All right, laddie. Just as right as rain. No damage done. Sit over here, Mr. Moody. Uh, thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. Moody. Hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. Now, don't tell me, Mr. Moody, that you've dug up another grub stick. Aye, that I have, my bonny one. The 20th, from an old crony in Canora. Oh, but this one will be the charm. I've got my eye on one of the prettiest pieces of outcrop no more than a couple of hundred miles from here. Good evening, Mrs. Ward. Mr. Moody. Mrs. Ward. As I was saying, one of the prettiest pieces of outcrop as ever you've seen in all your life. To which my good friend Red will convey me as soon as I've gathered together my supplies. Upon payment in advance and payment for the last expedition. Oh, fear not, my young friend. I came well healed. The best news I've heard in a long time. And then, when I've made my fortune, struck it rich, I will return and lay my hat to the feet of yon gorgeous creature who adorns the heat of this table. Mr. Moody, are you drinking? Well, uh... Uh, no, that depends, my dear lady, on whether your question is an inquiry or uh, an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to sweep you off your feet, Hillary. You know that. Let's not talk about it anymore, Bill. All right, dear. Anyhow, you haven't definitely said you won't ever marry me, so I haven't given up hope yet. Oh, you're awfully nice, Bill. And I'd probably be very happy with you, but... Well, Hillary, why won't you come back to Toronto and be my secretary again anyway? This place is not for you. You belong in a city where you have theaters, music, companionships. Bill, there are so many things that keep me from making a decision. Red North, for example? You don't expect me to admit anything to a persuasive man like William Gillespie, do you? I wish I could persuade you. Well, you know how much I care for you. It's been wonderful seeing you, Bill. Come again soon. As soon as possible. Hello, beautiful. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gerard. Mr. Gerard, why not Paul? Uh, look, honey, these kids give me an idea. How about taking my plane and going on a nice private picnic, huh? I already have a picnic plan, Mr. Gerard, with my pupils. You mean you'd rather be with a bunch of kids than with me? That's a question I'd rather not answer. I don't seem to be very popular around here. That noble brother of mine sure has been talking, hasn't he? Red has never discussed you with me. Maybe not with you, but with others. Why don't you ask Red about that? That's just what I am going to do. I'll be seeing you, toots. I want to talk to you, blabbermouth. Well, here I am. And here I am for keeps. I'm going to build a hangar across the lake. Across the lake? Yes. You've never done anything but make trouble for both of us. Why don't you stay out of my territory? This is a free country, brother. This area's just begun to pay dividends for me, Paul. You move in here with a slick new plane, you'll take all the cream. There's no room for two of us here, especially us two. Afraid of a little competition? Your double-crossing kind of competition, yes. Business or personal? Could be I'll cut you out with Hillary, hey? <laughs> You're always a sucker for dames. You keep Miss Ward's name out of this, and if you do talk about her, don't call her a dame. Take your hand off me.
assist you in your departure, Mr. Gerard. Bon voyage! Well, anyway, he looks a lot worse than you do, Red. Now, you better see, sir. Holy smoke, the picnic! This was a swell idea of yours, holding the picnic out here. Gives me a chance to get in a day's loafing. Well, Red, there's a bruise on your cheek. Is there? Yes. Did you bump yourself when you landed last night? Maybe. Well, you never did anything like that before. How about New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve? Everybody gets kissed on New Year's Eve. Under the mistletoe. There's no mistletoe here. I seem to be attracting quite a lot of attention today. Paul? Oh, no, not Paul. Oh, Gillespie. Mm-hmm. He wants me to go back to Toronto and... marry him. Marry him? You gonna do it? I don't think so. Well, he's a pretty nice guy. Hey, Red! Help! 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 I got my foot yourself in the darndest positions. You don't do so bad yourself, Please hang up your things. Mother's eternally following you around, picking up after you. Boy, you should have been down at the dock this morning. What a battle! Battle? Sure. Paul and Red. Red knocked Mr. Fancy Pants galley west, right off the dock and into the water. What were they fighting about? You. They were fighting about me? Yep. What on earth would they find a fight about where I'm concerned? Well, I guess Red didn't like your name being dragged into the conversation. My name in what conversation? Well, this smart Alec Gerard made an insinuation. What kind of an insinuation? Oh, Chuck, sometimes you can be the most annoying kid brother in the world. What was this all about? Oh, he insinuated that the reason Red was sore at his appearance in this territory was more on account of you than for business reasons. Do you think that's the case, Chuck? No. Red hasn't got a jealous bone in his body. Oh, is that so? Do that. You scared me halfway out of my shoes. Come here and sit down. I want to talk to you about something. I just found out how you got that bruise. Oh, young Mr. Ward's been on the job, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's probably all over the whole community by now. A fine thing. 
two grown men fighting over the village school teacher. What will my pupils say? Well, they'll probably demand a rematch so they can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Red. Is Paul going to cut in on your territory? It looks like it. It'll make a difference, won't it? Probably. We've just begun to show a profit. And now with this competition, I don't know. But why, Red? After all, he's your brother. Paul's a nod sort of a brother. I'll tell you all about it one day. All right. But it seems so unfair. I don't understand it. Mm, you wouldn't understand things like that. Red, I'm going to say something perhaps you won't like. But why don't you drop all this and go back with Trans Canada? They've offered you a good job a dozen times. Up here, you're playing tag with death half the time. You want me to let Paul chase me out of my own territory, the field I've developed? Quit and admit that I'm licked? No. When you put it that way, I... I suppose not. But I was only thinking of the future. I'm not going to run, Hillary. I'm going to stick if I have to live on beans and keep the planes together with bailing wire. But don't you worry about all this. Come on, let's go in and get dinner. I'll be in as soon as I finish correcting his papers. I can't afford to pay your back wages, Chuck. I can't afford to buy a new float. Well, they're leaking badly, Red. They're dangerous. Well, beggars can't be choosers. If it wasn't for that stinker to ride. Well, he's here now. There's nothing much we can do about it. Sometimes I feel like heaving a boulder into the bottom of that motorboat of his. That'd be a silly thing to do. He'd only go and get another one, and you'd be guilty of a nasty piece of sabotage. I'd serve him right. Red. If you let me haul freight in a light plane, we could handle more stuff and get some of our business back. You haven't got enough hours to hold a commercial license. But right away... No, Chuck. Use the light plane to pile up your hours, but no freight. Now run along up to the lodge and feed your face. I'll see you there in a minute, after I fix this rudder. Got to pick up a load at Fort Rouge this afternoon. Okay. What are you doing that for? Why, well, Chuck, tomorrow's Dominion Day. Hello? Hello? Yes. Just a minute. Long distance, Toronto, for Red. Well, if it's cargo, I'll take it. Hello? No, this is his mechanic. Provincial Chemical Works? Nitro? Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Pretty glad to handle it. Yes, sir, that's right. Nitro, not nitroglycerin. What's going on, Chuck? It was long distance for you. Mr. Paxton, Provincial Chemical Works at Toronto, was sending a load up by express for the Silver Leaf. Yes, nitro. You're not going to take it, Red. You can't. Call him back. It's a nice load, Hillary. There's a special bonus for a trip like this. It should put me square with the world for a month. But you can't. You know what happened to Dad. You know how I feel about nitro. You should. You're not taking that load, Red. I'm sorry, Hillary. I forgot. You don't have to worry. Come on, Chuck, let's get some lunch. I've got to get out of here as soon as I can. I sure hate to pass up the money in that nitro hall, Red. We need it. I'm not going to pass it up. I've got to have it. If I pass it up, that'll mean all the Silverleaf business will go to Paul. You know what happened to Steve Randall up at La Paz. 
He was one of the most experienced explosive men in the North. You let me worry about that. This load means 500 bucks. Hmm, what about Hillary? She'll never know. I'll take the light plane. You go over it this afternoon with a fine tooth comb while I'm up at Fort Rouge. Hi, Sam. Got anything for me? Well, how about getting that stuff out of here? Nitro. That's not consigned to me. No, Red North. But he ain't here. That stuff's got to go out today. I'll be danged if he's going to stay on the station all night. Where is Red? His mechanic, young Chuck, said he flew up to Fort Rouge right after lunch. Say, you've got some stuff to go to Silverleaf. I wouldn't fly that stuff for $1,000 an hour. No, sir, I'll stick to the nails and tennis balls. <laughs> well, if it's good enough for Red to fly, it must be safe enough for you to fly. What Red does is his own business. If he wants to flirt with the undertaker, he can do it, but I won't. But if I ever crack up, I want them to be able to find the pieces. Anything come in for Red on the afternoon train, Sam? Nitro. Yeah, that's it. Nitro. Red just sent a flash through to the Met Office in Port Rouge. That float in the ship's gone bluey again. He'll have to stick there and fix it, even if he's got to do it with canvas. Means what? Well, he wants you to hold the ship until he gets down here when he'll pick it up. No soap. That shipment goes out of day or my name ain't Sam Hagerman. Why, there's enough explosive in that quake to blow the whole community to perdition. I guess you'll have to hand it over to me after all, Sam. I'm going right up past the Silver Leaf with this load anyhow. Guess so, Gerard. I've got authority to consign a load of this character to anyone I like. Railroad property is railroad property. You can't do that. You heard what Sam said, didn't you, kid? That stuff's got to be out of here tonight. Of course, you may lose the charter if I take it. <laughs> that load is Red's. It belongs to him and nobody else is going to touch it. You aced your way into this territory after Red had developed it. Now you're skimming the cream off. Low rates, half loads, anything. Any cheap chisel. Why, you... Now, <laughs> just a moment, fellas. I don't want no trouble from nobody. Don't worry about me, Sam. Red beat his head off once, and I think I could do it again. Well, I ain't interested in that. All I want to do is get that nitro out of here. Okay. You help me load it on the truck? Uh, sure, sure. We agreed to handle this charter, and we'll handle it. He didn't go anywhere that I know of. I made him some sandwiches because he said he had a lot of work to do at the dock. But both planes are gone. Well, that's strange. Perhaps he's taken the light plane up for a little spin to try something out. I wonder. Sam? Yeah. Nitro. Where is it? Chuck took it. Chuck took it? You let that kid handle Nitro? Look here, Red. 
He insisted on taking it. I couldn't let that stuff lie around the office until you felt like calling for it. Do you know what's happened? Chuck's taken the light plane and decided to deliver that stuff himself. The air's rough this evening. One good bump could explode that nitro. The dang young fool. You knew that kid couldn't deliver freight. Any freight. He never mentioned he was going to fly the stuff. I can't stop him if he wants to accept delivery. You know that isn't true. You purposely didn't get back in time. Somebody had to fly it and Chuck had to do it. That's not true. There's absolutely nothing you can say. You know how I feel about nitro. You're not taking that load, Red. I'm sorry, Hillary. I forgot. You don't have to worry. I sure hate to pass up the money in that nitro hall, Red. We need it. I'm not going to pass it up. You accepted the nitro. Then you lost your nerve. You were too yellow to go through with it yourself. Let Chuck carry the load. Come in. Hello, Red. Hello, Davy. Come on in and sit down. Thank you. How are you? Okay. Haven't seen very much of you recently. I've been pretty busy. Oh, that's funny. I was talking to Sam Hagerman, and he was saying that he's got a lot of freight waiting over there for you. He said you're flying hardly any loads at all. You tell Hagerman to mind his own business and do the same thing yourself. I'm sorry, Davy. Okay, Red. Hagerman's right. I'm not doing much flying lately. I don't feel like it. Look, Red, I don't want to be a Budinsky, but I'm worried about you. You've been sitting around here brooding for the last six weeks. I don't know what happened with you and Hillary. I do know Mrs. Ward and she went back to Toronto and she got her old job back. But, Red, whatever happened... Whatever happened, happened. And that's that. You feeling guilty about Chuck? It wasn't your fault, Red. You couldn't even have done anything to save him. He was doing my job for me. Because he wanted to. Because he thought you were the best bush pilot in the North. Your job, the best job in the world. Why, keeping you in the air, keeping the freight moving were the biggest things in that kid's life. You can't let loyalty like that down, Red. You've got to keep on the job, keep him flying. Oh, that sounds like a lot of mush. No. Sounds right. 
Well, anyway, you've got a snap out of it, right? People are beginning to talk. So what? It doesn't do a bush pilot any good to have people saying he's hitting the booze, saying he's washed up. Are they saying that? Well, some are, yes. But not you, Davy. No, not me. Here. Come on over to my place and have some grub. Do you good. All right. Bell, Mr. Taggart. It's about the Mercy flight. What's it say? Red North in bad shape and not reliable. Stop. Have chartered Paul Gerard plane. Stop. Gerard good pilot, but does not know country well enough. Stop. Expert guide necessary. Signed, Sam Hageman. Where's Martin? He's out in the outer office. You pacing me, Chief? Yeah, come in here, Martin. We're in trouble. Well, what's up? I have a telegram from Nobel. This flyer, Red North, is in bad shape, it seems. Got another flyer, Paul Gerard, but he doesn't know the epidemic area. Needs a guide. Hmm, that's not too good. We're selling papers on this stunt, Martin. We can't fumble it. Now get your thinking cap on. Yeah, but it takes time to find... We haven't got time. Oh, whoever recommended this Red North? Girl in Gillespie's office across the street, Hillary Ward. Hey, I wonder. Well? I thought she'd go. A woman on a trip like that? She comes from the north, done a lot of flying, knows that country like the palm of her hand. Get her. And don't take no for an answer. And step on it. Okay, Chief. Get the boxes of salmon from Sam and put them in the truck. Ward, I was hardly expecting you, so you're my guide. Yes, I am. Well, this is indeed a very pleasant surprise. Shall we go? Sure, I'm all set. We can take off any time. Want to stop off at the lodge on the way? Uh, no. Let's get to the plane and get this job done. Okay. Any of your old friends, Miss Ward? This isn't a pleasure trip. Are you teaching school in Toronto? I work in the railway offices. Oh, yes, for that chap I met, uh, Gillespie. What's it like topside? Fine. Are you going up? Uh, so, Gerard take off a couple of minutes ago. Oh, so he's gone. Yeah, he got hooked for one of those mercy flights. 
running a load of serum up to Balsam Ridge. Epidemic up there. He doesn't know that area. Uh, Hillary Ward came up from Toronto to guide him in. Oh. There's no reason why Red couldn't have made that trip. Sam Hagerman wired Toronto he's in bad shape. I Red's as good a pilot as he ever was. Yeah, Hagerman's a fool. Red isn't quite the same since Chuck crashed, is he? No. No, he took it pretty hard. A lot of people took it pretty hard. No. But it isn't exactly pleasant being in this part of the country again. There's the place we want, to the right. Okay, get ready. When I kick right, right, I toss the boxes out. Anything from Gerard? Yeah, I heard an hour ago. He dropped the serum okay. They're on their way back now. Good. Cigarette? Thanks. Sit down. Keep me company for a while. If you've nothing better to do. I have nothing better to do. I like the sound of that motor. Is it serious? Could be. They're losing oil. What are you going to do? Try and make that small lake ahead. I don't know how long this motor's gonna last. Go back there and lie flat on your face and hold on. Maybe I'll make it, maybe I won't. Go on, get back there, I said. PSA calling VRO. PSA calling VRO. PSA calling VRO. Over. Hello, Novell. Calling Novell. Hello, Novell. BRO to BSA. Are you getting me, Gerard? Come in, Gerard. Crashing near Black Lake. Hello, Gerard. Hello, Gerard.
nothing more coming over. Near Black Lake was the last I got. Maybe they'll make the water all right, Red. You stay on this set. Get somebody to stand by at the dock. I may have to come back and gas up if I don't find them. Okay, Red. Jab needle through the top. <coughs> feels, feels like broken ribs and lungs. Won't be long now. It doesn't take long to work when you're in this shape. What else can I do? Nothing. I, I'm finished. But you, you can get out. They may have heard my signal and, and sent a, a rescue plane. Keep a sharp lookout. One thing before you go, Hillary. Your brother. My brother? Yes, I... I've got to clear that up. I needle the kid into thinking I... I was going to take the nitro away from Red, unless he moved it. That's why the kid took, took the chance. He did it to protect Red. Red didn't know a thing about it until... until, until it was too late.
no use trying to say thanks. There just aren't enough words. Well, it's just the old bush pilot service. Somebody has to look after these tender feet that get lost. Darling, I'm not going to let you go. I love you, Hillary, and you love me. But I'm engaged to Bill. Do you love Bill? Oh, please, I... Red! Red, me lad! Red, my lad, I have done it. I've been traveling day and night to bring you the good news. Miss Ward, Red, I've struck it rich at last. Aye, it's the truth. I found the riches of the Indies. More gold than you could... Oh, but, eh... Uh, what's this all about? Who's going away? I am, Mr. Moody. I'm going back to Toronto. Ford! Uh, congratulations, Andy. I'll be with you in a minute. Well, I guess this is goodbye. We've said goodbye so many times. Too many times. Darling, people who love each other should never say goodbye. Well, there isn't much time. I have to go. I told him I'd come back, Red. I promised him. Well, if that's what you want, he's a pretty nice guy. Red North, if you say that just once more, then it isn't what I want. Oh, darling. Yeah. Would you look at that? Wheel, wheel. A ticket to Toronto. Dropped from the heavens by a sweet angel. Would be daft to ignore the workings of destiny. And waste a perfectly good ticket. Especially when the object of my affections is in Toronto. Aye. I'll do it. I'm going to court. Mrs. Ward is finally to become Mrs. Moody.